Thanks for staying with me. It's now Ask the Council. And of course, we have two beautiful, wonderful, and uh, shall I say handsome? <laughs> you can say so. <laughs> Councilor officers here today. We have uh, Terry Day. Terry, how are you? Yeah, I'm great, Vernon. Thanks for having us again on the show. Yeah, you're a co-host now, right? I, I think so. I think once you hit a certain number of times. You exactly. Yeah. And uh, we also have a Paul Rivera. I think this is your... This is my second, second time. It's a time. pleasure to be yeah. back, Vernon. Good to have you. You guys are here long enough now, so um, I hope you have been traveling around the country. I have. I've been traveling around. Um, I got to... A friend of mine has invited me to go to Portland, and I went there a, a, f a little while back, and... It was great. I love it. The Boston Bay, the Jerk Center there is so great. I know you love the Jerk Chicken, so man. Great. <laughs> what about you, Paul? We've gotten pretty much everywhere, except we haven't made it to the east side of the island yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a we have a two year old at home, and it's not always easy to I get know, around. I but know. Uh, but we do our best. Yes. But all right, let's now we have a call online already. Wow, okay. great. Good so morning, great. Maurice. How are you? Good morning, my brother. Where are you calling from? Boy, the Sunshine City man. Oh, listen, the whole of Jamaica is Sunshine City. <laughs> 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 I'll just give you a chance. Well, I, know, well, well, I know, I know. Go ahead. Yes, listen, I have a. Uh, uh, let me put this now. Um, mother filing for a married daughter. How long does would that take, please? Hi, Maurice. Sorry, um, sorry. sorry. Um, it's two years impending now. Okay. Hi, Maurice. This is Terry. Um, thanks for nice calling in. You. Thanks for calling in uh, the, this morning. Um, so th we can't really say exactly how long a filing is going to take. We have a lot. We have, as you know, I mean, there are so many. There are a lot of people from Jamaica and all around the world who are filing immigrant petitions for their family to come up and join them in the United States. Um, right. Some some generally take longer than others, um, especially things like siblings. Um, if you're a, a, a brother filing for your sister or vice versa, that can take a little bit longer than, say, for example, um, a newly married couple or a parent filing for a child. Um, if you, you what you can do, you have a couple options. Um, you can go online and you can uh, you can visit our website at um, kingston.usembassy.gov, and that'll okay. point you in the direction of um, things like U.S. immigration um, website or our own personal our own embassy email address, where you can email okay. us and ask for an update. Um, the most important thing at this point is making sure that your petitioner has sent in all the required documents, anything that they've asked you to send in. Make sure that they are on top of that, and that will help your filing go through much more quickly if on your side you're making sure that you sent in all the required documents and that your petitioner has sent in all of their required documents. Okay. She said that everything has gone through already for two years now. Okay, right. And like I said, I can't speak specifically for your case to tell you how much longer it's going to take because th it could take, you know, it's not, it's not set in stone how much time it takes for a mother filing for their child. But My daughter, yes. a, a, Right, for their daughter. So a great, um, just visit their, our website, like I said, and you can yes, always try to find more information there um, about, and you can email us as well, and that we might be able to answer some of your questions that you might Thank have. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Thanks, you too. Thanks for calling. And, and get some more of that jerk chicken in here. I, I will. I'm on it. I'm going to go up to Portland. If I come up there, you're going you're gonna to show me around? Uh, uh, sure, sure. All right. Sure. <laughs> and, jerk, and jerk chicken. All right. Oh boy. Uh, yes. <laughs> have a wonderful day. Thanks for calling. Uh huh. Thanks very much. Yeah, man. You have a wonderful day. All the best, my brother. All right. All right let's now hear from Joy. Joy, how are you? I'm good, Mr. Darby. I hear that. Good morning to speak to the counselor. Yes, sir. Good morning. Here. You go morning. right ahead. Good morning. Um, my U.S. visa will be expired in December. Can I travel on it for two weeks now? Uh, Joy, this is Paul. Thank you so much for calling and thanks for your question. Your visa yes. is valid. If you're going to go and come back before the expiration date on it, you oh, should so be... Oh, so I can travel on it between, before the expiration date? Absolutely. Okay, and when I want to renew in it, um, do I have to go online? I'm 67. Yes, ma'am. So you go... I'm, I'm not I'm not sure what you mean there, but you do... When you, w you want to make sure that you, um, you renew um, your visa... In in as as soon as possible, you do go online for that. You uh, you fill out the application. You make sure you fill out the correct um, visa type that you are applying for. Schedule an interview, and and we'll be happy to see you back at the embassy to renew that visa. 
Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. All right. Thanks for calling. And now let's go right now to Stacy. Good morning, Stacy. How are you? I am fine. Good morning. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning, Stacy. Yes, I'm just calling to say thank you. I had called in when Mr. Michael Schimmel was on air. Oh, great. And I, right. I That's a big man, you know. Yes, <laughs> general. <Yeah>. general. <laughs> I, he, he loves coming on this show. He loves talking to everybody and, you know, breaking out his patois and <laughs> big, big. No, he knows patois better, better oh, than many of us. Sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. For sure. I, I had called in and telling my situation and he advised me to come to the embassy and I went and I got through. So I just want to call and say thank you. Oh, great. That's so great to hear, Stacey. We, you know, we, uh, we love uh, having, we, our job at the embassy is to get people who are going to travel well to the United States and get them up there so they can go up there and, you know, see their family, spend money, have a great time, and tell everybody in Jamaica how much they enjoy traveling to the United States. So, and like I said, um, our CG, our uh, Mr. Schimmel loves coming on the show, loves talking to you all, and, you know, he, yeah. he, we, we just love having great stories like that and hearing them. It's terrific. Right. So I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Program. And yeah. can you imagine that it's so nice for someone to call back and say thanks. So I'm yeah. going to say to you, thanks for saying thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, you you uh, have a wonderful day. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Schmel, you know, he's classic, you know. He, he <laughs> is. Tell he's, you, you the know? first time he came on the show, I was a... Knocked over. Yeah. Because, you know, you expect, you know, he's coming from the U.S. Embassy. Mm -hmm. You know, many persons who go to the U.S. Embassy, ah, these consular officers. And then he just came on air. And what he basically did was just to tell the whole of Jamaica that we are ordinary persons just like you all. Mm -hmm. And I think that all of you just simply just walk the same path. Oh, yeah. And we, we've learned so much from him. I mean, he's he came before before I got here and he yes. just... You know, he, he, he shows the way, and we he's like that in, in the office, the, mm -hmm. the personality that you see here. Yeah. He's just like that, and he's just a great boss to work under. Yeah, exactly. Full of fun and love. Definitely. <laughs> All right, uh, we have another. Uh, Stacy. Okay, let's go to Stacy now. Good morning, Stacy. How are you? Where are you calling from? Good morning, Mr. Derby. Um, I'm calling from Swanstown. Hey, good I to have you. How are you? Good yeah. morning. Good morning. Good morning. So um, my husband is filing for me. And we just received an um, email from the NBC stating that they have received all our documents. However, they are waiting for the um, U.S. Embassy to schedule an interview. I just want to know how long that normally takes. Hi. Uh, good morning, Stacey. Um, this is Terry um, talking to you. Terry. Um, so from what I understand, you said your, your husband's filing for you, and the, uh, the NBC has received all of your documents now, and they're just waiting on the embassy to schedule an appointment for you, right? Correct, correct. So basically, when it, well, once NVC has all your documents, you've turned all the documents into them, you've made sure that, you know, all your T's are crossed and all your I's are dotted, so to say, um, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a relatively short process for you to, you know, all the, all the legwork has been done, in a manner of speaking. Mm -hmm. Most of the heavy lifting has be d been done. It's up to us at that point to interview you, to uh, make, you know, just... Make sure that all your we have all the documents we need to see. That's why you're going to bring your medical. You're going to bring your police certificate. Everything that we've asked you to bring to the interview, you're going to mm -hmm. bring that. And um, it should be a relatively, you know, barring any significant um, hurdles, it should be a relatively easy, easy, easier process for you to get, you know, get everything sorted out. Um, as far as the timeline, I can't speak specifically to your case. Like I've told, like I told the other caller, um, I can't really speak to an, an individual person's case because I'm, you know, I don't have your file in front of me. I'm not looking at it. But um, generally speaking, it's, um, it's not, it's, it's nowhere near as long as, let's say, from when you initially file the petition. Um, you know, it's, you're, we're not talking years here. We're talking, you know, months. We're talking a, a significant shorter amount of time for your for your appointment to get scheduled and like I said to the other caller when you come in make sure that you've got all the documents that you need make sure that you're ready to answer any of the questions that the officer has for you and mm -hmm. um, and then it should be um, you know it's it's hopefully going to be a, a smooth a smooth situation for you okay thank you thank you thank you for calling Okay, no problem. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks, you too. Bye. Have a good day. All the best. And thanks for calling. All right, let's go to another caller. Terry, how are you doing, Terry? 
fine, Mr. Darby. Hey, good to um, have you. Where are you calling from now? St. Anne. Hey, the beaut- I just love every time somebody says St. Anne, just remind me of that beautiful parish. I Definitely. love it. Vegetation, <laughs> fantastic there. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, um, my question is this, is that I am married to a United States citizen, and I was wondering, you know, I don't wish to be for at the moment, but um, is it possible for me to get a visa? Hi. To visit? Yeah, yeah Terry. I think Paul can take this one, yeah. Yep. Sure. sure. Uh, Terry, this is Paul. So glad to talk to you. Thank you for calling today. Um, so j- just so, just to make sure I have your situation correct, your husband is a U.S. citizen, um, mm-hmm. and you're trying to figure out if you are eligible for basically a tourist visa to go visit the United States. Right, United. right. Sure. So, oh. so y- y- there's there's no reason why why you should hesitate to apply. Uh, we'd, we'd be glad to, to interview you at the, um, at the embassy. The big thing, like anything else, is to show like any other applicant is to show that that you are intending to use this visa as a tourist that you're planning to go to the United States visit and and come back and one of the big things um, that we look for in that is to make sure that you have that you demonstrate to us that you have a reason to come back you have a job here you have a life here you have established yourself here Um, the the, the fact that 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 you are um, married to a US citizen is is not necessarily something that's going to be looked upon negatively, and it's really about your whole situation. And if I were you, I wouldn't hesitate to uh, to at least apply. All right, and then in the in the in in our in a, in the long run, probably probably two years or so, I'd like to um to apply for you know to to go off to migrate. Mm-hmm. Would that that then how oh, what's the process? Well, um, the immigrant visa process is um, going to be handled by a totally different um, internal, you know, U.S. Uh, organization in our in in the government. Okay, in, instead of the State Department. Um, you like I um, I'm going to go ahead and give you the uh, the website address so you can find out more information about it. It's going to be Kingston, like the city Kingston. Dot U.S. Embassy dot gov and there's a whole section on the website dedicated to immigrant visa petitions how you can go about filing for one what the different classifications are um it's there's going to be a lot of information very useful information um for you there about starting your immigrant filing and i i also want to say that uh, some people are under the impression i think that because you have an immigrant visa you have to live in the united states all of the time and that's that's not necessarily true you you do want to travel to the United States and set up set up there and because it's an immigrant visa right um, but for example if you have small children and you want them to stay in school down here they're more than welcome to you know stay up with their parents one of their parents you know during the summer or during holidays right. and then maintain that school you know schooling down here and then when they finish they can always you know travel up and to live or if you have for example you're working or you have a business down here and you want to be able to travel back and forth to maintain your business you're more than welcome to do that too so once you become a legal permanent resident of the United States you do have the freedom to travel back and forth to Jamaica if you have you know social ties here or if you have um, economic or business ties here and that's totally under okay under the use of the immigrant visa as well as, as well okay all right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling, and you have a wonderful day. All right. Um, Terry and Paul, we're going to go yes, for sir. the break right now. Listen, going to go for the break. Uh-huh. You're listening to At Your Service here on Nationwide Nadia FM, a revolution in media. Yes, it's Ask the Council. Of course, when we come back, we will continue to take your calls. The landline numbers to call are 630-9371. 630-9371. Six three zero nine three seven three and uh, six three zero nine three seven four. Our cell number is six one eight eight two five five. Remember to follow me on Twitter. Yes, my handle is uh, v derby j m v derby j m, and you can text me at eight one six five two six one. Vernon Darby saying to you, so come back, don't move. The greatest gift I can give my children is an education. 
and it's my duty to prepare them for a future full of possibilities. Focusing on their studies should be their priority. And to make sure they get all the support they need, I trust Western Union. Help them achieve their dreams with Western Union, moving money for better. To Kill Initial Jamaica has more than 45 years of experience in protecting homes and businesses from pest and hygiene risks. Rent to Kill Initial's fully trained technicians will match the right solution to your problem. Don't wait until it's too late. Protect your investment now. Rent to Kill Initial, experts in essentials. For a free inspection, call us today at 926 4236 or visit them on facebook.com slash rent to kill initial Jamaica. Welcome back. You're listening to At Your Service here on Nationwide 90 FM, a revolution in media. The People's Program, the People's University. Yes, it's a feature. Ask the Consul and my very special guests are Consular Officers Terry Day and Paul Rivera. It's good to have you again. And um, what's happening? Yeah, I'm sure there are some things coming up as far as the U.S. Embassy is concerned. By the way, yes. And Monday was a holiday? Monday, Monday was, was a holiday. holiday. Was a Labor yes, Day? Yes. Yep, Labor Day. And it was we had the day off work, which was nice. But <laughs> it, <laughs> I can just imagine that. <laughs> Historically, it's a, it's a union holiday to keep uh -huh. to... Because, you know, people were fighting for the, the five-day work week. And so this was just a day to commemorate the people in the United States who fought for, you know, work equality and having people to... Equal you know, pay. Equal pay and things like that. Yes. So it's, you know, in addition to being a nice day to, you know, go out and see the country. <laughs> Maybe but go over to St. Anne. But it was a clever trick because all the schools are back in session now. Right. And we're trying to get to work on Tuesday and the yeah. traffic. Uh, so, yeah. But it's a good time to yes. take the moment to congratulate mm -hmm. all the students who are starting school, starting university, mm -hmm. all the students who've done so well on their CSECs mm -hmm. and their CXCs. Congratulations to everyone out there. Mm -hmm. And along those lines, it is worth telling you that October 20 and October 21, we, are, we will be hosting a college fair. Um, uh, October 20th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Interna American International School of Kingston at AISK. Mm -hmm. And on the 21st, also from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Hillel Academy. Uh, admission is free. Uh, there will be representatives from uh, various United States uh, colleges and universities, people there to help out anybody who has questions about applying for colleges and universities. Uh, I would encourage anyone to go. You know, I've I've been here since the beginning of 2015, and to date, I've interviewed nearly 12,000 Jamaicans. But my favorite ones. Hold on, did I hear 12,000? <laughs> yeah. Wow. But yeah. my favorite ones are the ones that are seeking F1 visas to go study in the United States. Wow. That's, and um, that's that's. So I encourage anyone who's interested in studying in the U.S. to take a look at the college fair if they have further. Uh, questions about about the event you should feel free to email Kingston IRC that's our library the information resource center Kingston IRC at state dot gov that is the contact information for that event it should be really good all right we're gonna mention probably mention those dates later on uh, but we have a caller Tracy how are you where are you calling from I'm good I'm calling from Kingston good to have you you go right ahead okay I I'm a bit scared. I had applied for my visa last year in December, but I was turned down. I am not sure for my reason. I've been in my job for like two years at the time, two years and eight months. But I want to apply and I'm a bit scared anyway because I'm not sure when would be the right time and if it's a possibility that I might be able to get it this time. So Terry, this is Paul. I'm sorry, Tracy. Thank you so much for calling. Um, this is Paul. Um, obviously, we can't Con we don't know the context of, of your situation in particular, and, and each situation is, is individual. Um, okay. I w if, if I were you, I would analyze basically what has, what has changed in your life. What can you show that has been a substantial um, 
change, improvement, whether it's in your personal situation, in your economic situation, relative to when you applied before, and make sure that if you do choose to reapply, to highlight that um, in your interview. Um, that and that's and that's really the thing. It's not so much about time. It's not so much about um, continuously reapplying. It's making sure that you have something to show that is that is different. That shows your ties to Jamaica more strongly than you d than you did in the past. Okay. Um, so far, it's my job because I'm still in the job, so that's the change for me. I mean, I'm not married, so it's not that's not a change. Sure. But Paul, I would ask, you know, wh why is she scared? Because if you go there uh, to the embassy and you, you are scared, then mm -hmm. that might have some impact on how you answer those questions. Absolutely. You know, and there, and there, is no, there really is no reason to be scared per se. We're, we're all people. Um, we've we've been through a lot of this kind of a lot of these kinds of situations before. I've I've obviously I was born in the United States, so I've not applied for a U.S. visa, but I've applied to visas for other countries. I know what it's like to be on the other side of that window too. Yeah. I know what it's like to have uh, put out my money also to to tr to just for the privilege of of having the interview. So there's there's no reason to be scared. Everybody there is very very compassionate, very understanding of of your situation, and it's really just making sure that that you truthfully place yourself in the in the best light possible yes always yeah. carry the document of the truth, truth. <laughs> yes <laughs> all right i don't okay. be scared let's go there and just you know answer you know truthfully you should be all right okay i did but you know sometimes it's not really scared in the sense that you scared people but you know you have a hope because you hear people talk so much about the u.s and yeah, the that's US what you must don't listen to what people tell you call this program it's because they will scare you all right <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And thanks, thanks for so calling. Thank you, Trace. Okay. Likewise. Have a good day. Okay, we have no Chris. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Well, I'm fine. Yeah, man. Good to have you. Yeah, my question is, right, this is a big one. I was removed from the U.S. almost 20 years ago, right? And I have three kids that live there, a wife and four grandkids. And I would like to know if there's any way possible I could apply for a visa, but not to, like a resident, but like a visa to go back to visit them at that. Uh, Good morning, Chris. Um, thanks, yeah. for, thanks for calling in. Um, so, yeah, you know. so, like we've been kind of hard, uh, saying a, a little bit uh, all morning, we can't really comment on specific cases. Um, I don't yeah. have my database in front of me. I'm not looking up your case or anything like that. And so it's it's. I'm just going to speak a little bit generally. Okay. So usually when okay. people are removed from the United States, um, what happens is they have an ineligibility. Um, from traveling back to the United States. Now, whether that is a permanent ineligibility or a short-term ineligibility depends on what was the reason that they were removed from the United States. So if you were removed for um, something that leads to a permanent ineligibility, um, it would cause you not to be able to travel back to the United States, um, you know, under a non-immigrant visa, okay? So, um, what I would say is that if you if you want to travel to the United States and you have um, been removed for, for whatever your reason, in, reason is, you are more than welcome to apply. You can... Um, bring the any documents that you have regarding your removal any um court documents that you have saying okay w whatever the situation was whatever charges or whatever happened anything that's going to explain you know to the officer who's interviewing you um, what happened? And I think, th I like you've come to us today being very open and honest. Okay, I was removed. You know, yeah. you're going to be want to have that same attitude when you talk to the officer because they're going to have information and they're going to want it to match up with the information that you're giving them in the interview. So if you say, okay, you know, this happened and these are the documents that I have, that's going to help be able to help the, the officer make the best decision possible with the, you know, with you being truthful. And that's what we yeah. want. That's what we want to happen. So, um, for for more information about ineligibilities and how to apply for the visa, you can visit our website, okay, that's going to be kingston.usembassy.gov. 
And like I said, it's not yeah. going to have any information specifically for your case. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But it might help you understand what kind of documents you need to bring or what kind of um, ineligibilities that you might have based on your removal from the United States. Okay. Uh, even if it's something permanent remove it, you, you, you still can apply. Of course, of course. You can apply, and that might help you if you um, end up wanting to do an immigrant visa petition, maybe understanding, okay, this is the section of U.S. law that I'm ineligible or I'm not able to travel on a non-immigrant visa. This is the section that, you know, that, I'm, that I fall under. That might help you in the future. It just helps you get more information. And like I said, the most important thing is bring everything that you have, bring all the documents you can find, and just be as open and honest with the officer as possible and they'll be able to make a decision, the best decision, based on that information. Okay, it sounds good. I, I'll probably try. Okay, thank you, so, okay. thank you so much for calling, Chris. All right, thank you. Okay, Chris, you have a great day. All right, uh, lady and gentlemen, we go to another caller. This time we go to Dan. Dan, how are you? I am fine, thank you. I can hear it in your voice. Where are you yes. calling from? I'm calling from Kingston. Hey, good to have you. You go ahead. Right. Good morning to the council. Good morning, Good morning Diane. Diane. Right. I'm interested in getting a visitor's visa for my mom, but she's unable to conduct an interview by herself. How do I go about that? Um, I'm, because I'm of a, a, ment a, a, a medical condition. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, are, are you saying that she's that she would be unable to come to the to the she embassy? Could. She would be able to come, but she wouldn't be able to answer the questions. You know, it's fine. It's it's not unusual that we get um, applicants who, for some reason or another, can't respond for themselves. The right. the most common, in fact, is children. Okay. We have we have babies who come with their parents applying for visas, and obviously, as I try, the babies don't answer my questions. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and this this would be this would be a similar situation. There would right. be there would be no real problem. Um, if for you accompanying her sure. uh, to her appointment, um, mm -hmm. and it would be the most likely the questions would be directed towards you, um, okay. and and both of both of your situations, um, I, I don't I don't foresee any any problem at all. We'd we'd love to see you both in the embassy. Would I need to take a medical report to support the fact that she's unable to respond? It it wouldn't hurt, but I don't I don't believe that that would be necessary at all. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to know. No, I appreciate your call, mm -hmm. and thank you for asking. And thank you so much. My pleasure. All the best. Yeah, man. I wish all the best to, to mom. Say thank you. Just until our morning for me, all right? Sh sure. Yeah, all right. Thank you, you, you have a wonderful day. And you you thank you for man. calling. Let's go to this next caller. Good morning, Sharon. How are you? Good morning. I'm okay. Yeah, Sharon is calling from where now? Manchester. Uh, St. Elizabeth. Ah, I see. I was near <laughs> enough. <laughs> go ahead. Yes. I would like to know... Um, I was told that a child under a certain age, if you are seeking a U.S. visa for such a child, they don't have to um, come to the embassy. So I am just calling to get some clarification as to what age you don't have to take the child there. Yeah, thank you so much for calling. That is actually true, and that's an excellent question. Um, a child under the age of 14 does not oh. need to be present for the interview um, as long as the parent or, or legal guardian is, is there to represent them. Okay. So you just take the documents along. The child can stay in school and you just do the, 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 the transaction on their behalf. Yes, ma'am. As much as we love to see the kids, they should be in school and, uh, and okay. you as their parent are more than welcome to represent them. Okay. That's what I did to find out. But I would ask you something. Why did you ask somebody else? Pardon me? Why did you ask somebody else? <laughs> ah, <laughs> you have this program. Hey, we yeah. have the, the, the experts well, here. Well, you, that is why I'm confirming what I've heard. No, <laughs> next time you don't have to confirm. You call here first. <laughs> I, I sure will. <laughs> All right, have a wonderful okay, day. Okay, you take care now. Okay, Thank thanks you. for calling. Well, um, you'd mentioned about the, uh, is it the... College fair, yes, sir. Right, yep. On College October fair. twenty and also October twenty-one, we're gonna have the uh, the fair on October twenty. October twentieth will be at the American International School of Kingston. American from International School of Kingston. Yes, Where sir. Is that? It is at Two College Green Avenue, Kingston Six. Mm -hmm. That will be from eleven a.m. to six p.m. Okay. And the following day, on October twenty-first, first at the Hillel Academy, which is at fifty-one Upper Markway, Kingston Eight. Again, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
Right. And what do you expect to, if you go there, you know, what can one expect to see happening or probably learn? How do you think it will be beneficial to those who intend to... Enormously beneficial. You know, um, st for international students in the U.S., there is a, there's, at the same time, there is a very well-organized system, but at the same time, it's a sometimes complex system that has to be navigated. So from the from the point of applying to universities and mm -hmm. colleges, figuring out what it is that you want to study, where's the appropriate place for you to go, um, finding out about financial aid, finding out about what you have to do to obtain your F1 student visa for to study in the United States. All of those things are questions that can be answered for you at the college fair. And yeah, uh, I, yes, was, go ahead, I was um, going to say that Paul got mentioned a little bit earlier that how, how much he loves interviewing the F1 students. I really love the students who have gone up for the, you know, the pin relays and the Miami Classics yeah. for <laughs> these athletes and they come back down and they've gotten these full scholarships to go to the United States yeah. and study and that's always so fun to see these kids and they're just so excited and it's just, I think it's a great, great opportunity for some of these student athletes to go up and study in the United States. But mm. you don't have to be a student athlete to, to travel to the United States and study and I think this college fair helps facilitate that for mm -hmm. people who maybe just think you know maybe I'd like to go to the United States and study maybe I like the opportunities that I that I might be able to have studying in a US college or university mm -hmm. and this is a great way to facilitate that kind of travel and I think it's really important yeah, so I encourage my listeners to go to these two college fairs Definitely. One will take place I, I would encourage just 20. as a shout out I, I used to be a professor in a past life I would encourage <laughs> I would encourage parents to go with the students as well oh okay. very important Mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. yes, and parents yes. to go as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's go to the lines right now. We have a caller there. Laverne, how are you, Laverne? Where are you calling from? Laverne? I think, I think uh, I've lost Laverne. No. All right, I'll tell you what. Why not go to Melissa? Me Melissa, how are you doing? Hi, good morning. I'm fine, thank you. Good, good Daddy. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kingston. Good to have you go right ahead. All right. I would like to find, all right, my mom is a citizen of the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried applying for a non-immigrant visa on several occasions, and I've been turned down. Um, I was told that I should wait until my mother files for me. Why is that so? Hi. Hi, Melissa. Um, this is Terry. Hi. Thanks for, thanks for yes. calling. Um, so... We, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but it's not necessarily um, a bar for you to travel to the United States on a non-immigrant visa if your family lives up there. Um, mm -hmm. I think that some people get that impression um, because it seems like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to go up there and move in with my family or what have you. But when, we, when the officers are doing the, the, the non-immigrant visa interview, um, they're looking at the sum total of um, all of your ties to Jamaica and to the United States and weighing those versus each other to determine if, oh. you, if you qualify for the visa. So Because I have a lot of ties here in Jamaica. Right. It's not a case like I want to go there and live anyway. Okay. Uh, no. And again, I, so I, I wasn't the officer that did the adjudication and I can't really speak to, <laughs> to what they were thinking. I can't say that. So people often ask us, you know, why did, why did I get it and my friend didn't? or why did my friend, you know, get it and I didn't. And I, I don't know, I'm not in the head of that officer who is doing the adjudication. I can just tell you yeah. generally what we, we generally look for. Um, so usually it's, you know, 100% of the time we're looking at your ties to Jamaica versus the United States. And that's what you have to, to overcome. So I, I don't know if you were listening a little bit earlier, but Paul talked a little bit about um, if you feel like there was some information that you have that wasn't conveyed to the officer that you didn't feel like you know they um, that you have ties that you didn't you weren't able to show enough um, you can make sure to highlight those when you go in for your, for your visa interview and Sorry, the thing about it is that I'm usually a person, only if you ask me a particular question, then I'll answer. Right. I'm not going to willingly volunteer if you did not ask. Right. And so, right. so w as Paul was saying that he's interviewed, I think, 12,000 people. He's been here since January. I've been here since April. And I've, um, I'm sorry, last April. And um, uh -huh. I've interviewed like 15,000 people. We, in the course of a day, we interview a lot of people. And it, it's sometimes it's up to the applicant to kind of make 
their point. Um, not okay. to say that you have to be aggressive towards the officer, but you should be I confident. Understand. You should be confident. You should, if you feel like there's something that you want to say that's a, a tie that you have, you should, yeah. by all means, you should mention that because that might be the kind of thing that you know t um, allows you to qualify when because the officer didn't have that information, they felt that you didn't okay. qualify. So because. So I'm well, just going to say, to apply again. yeah, yeah, you're free to apply again. Um, you can apply again um, whenever you like. And on our on the paper that we usually give out, it says you should wait up to a, a year before you reapply. But like I said, if you feel like there's information that you weren't able to convey or you didn't, um, you know, there's something else that's changed, like you're like Paul was saying in your situation that's changed, then by all means, you know, tell this to the officer and don't be. You know, we talked a little bit about being nervous or not feeling like you can speak up. We want to hear, you know, what you have to say. We want to know what you think is all your ties to Jamaica because that's going to help us make our decision. And, and if you can make that point clear to us, and we uh -huh. can see we can see it clearly, then and you qualify for the visa, then you will get the U.S. you know visa to travel. Okay then. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, you too. And you have a okay, wonderful day too. Any final advice you want to give uh, my listeners before? And I'm, I must let you know we have listeners all over, in other Caribbean countries, in the, in the U.S., United Kingdom, all over. Yeah, um, well, this is a bit more a b bit more local, but as we we're talking about the college fair um, a little yeah. bit earlier, a resource that we do have for students at the embassy is the Information Resource Center. Um, it's basically like a library. Um, it's got also got co it's got computers, books, magazines. Um, people who are preparing to go to the United States um, and to study can um, look at our SAT. Um, ha you know, books, our ACT books, find out about college and university in the United States. There's also, you know, fiction books for just for your own personal pleasure, books to be uh, to read. Um, and it's open to the public. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you have you'd have to sign up for a membership and it's granted on an individual basis. Um, for students, you need two passport size photographs, an email address and or telephone number of a guardian and a completed application form. And we also have a membership for professionals. Uh, you need to bring in two passport size photographs and a completed application form. And you can find out more information about this and everything that we've talked about today, be, be it non-immigrant visas, immigrant visas, American citizen services, um, events that we're having at the embassy or we're having in the community, and our information resource center on our website, which is going to be kingston.usembassy.gov. And... Um, yeah, so it's worth saying also that uh, uh, if there are folks out there on Twitter who want to follow us, mm -hmm. you can oh, follow sure. us at yeah. US, US Embassy JA, all one word, US Embassy JA on Twitter. On Facebook, you can look up US Embassy Jamaica and follow us there as well. And can I say that I found out that our, our ambassador, his dog has a Twitter, and it is dynamite. Yeah. I love it's sure pictures of his dog, and the dog is tweeting. I'm sure I, I know what it. he tweets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's interesting. Thank you very much, Terry Day and Paul Rivera, two consular officers who are my guests today from the United States Embassy right here in Kingston, Jamaica. Thank you very much. And you both have a wonderful day. Same thing to Thanks. all the Thank you so staff much, members Ryan. there at the United States Embassy. United States Embassy. United States Embassy. United States Embassy. United States Embassy.